What is philosophy? One of the places that I learned about this question, or it was a good place to reflect on this question, a book that I would recommend to, uh, to beginners in philosophy, is Alva Noah's book, Strange Tools, Art and Human Nature. In that, he, one of the things he says is that philosophy and arts are fundamentally the same kinds of activities. And what they do is that they, they make it obvious for us, or they try to make it clear to us what it is that we do. They try to make our own activities clear to us. For, for example, a painter, a visual artist, what they are interested in is to make the activity of seeing more apparent to us, to enable us to reflect on what it is for us to see. Why? In order to maybe open up the possibility of seeing things differently, seeing things in a, in a way that is impressionistic, or uh, you know, the kind of appreciation that is given to us when we see a cubist painting, or an expressionist painting, or an abstract painting. So art makes art the activity of perception, uh, the way we sense the world, it makes that apparent to us, it enables us to reflect better on our perceptions. Uh, philosophy enables us to reflect on our thinking with the help of concepts, and we think, ask questions, and using concepts and categories. Philosophy enables us to reflect on that. Now, part of what it is, what it does is that it usually enters into conversation, it enters into our experience as an interruption. There's a reason why it's not random. That people get annoyed a little bit and they, when they say that's a little bit too philosophical, let's not go there for now. It is familiar to us, that feeling, or at least we observe other people say that. They dismiss philosophical tendencies, say that's too philosophical. It, there's a reason for that, there's a good reason. And the reason is that our thinking usually is directed towards some goal. When we think, we are solving some problems. Now, philosophy is not interested in solving problems. Philosophy wants to understand better our process of thinking. It's like when you have a toolbox, instead of using your toolbox, you start to study the toolbox itself. And you understand the nature of the tools. And maybe one possible use of reflecting on your tools, your concepts, your thinking, one possible outcome of that is that it opens up the possibility of thinking differently, using your tools in a different way. But initially, it will be an interruption. It's like people in a dramatic scene, everybody has their role, and somebody enters into the scene and asks, what is the meaning of all of this? What is the point? How is this going to end? Or what does it mean to be on this stage? In that sense, Philosophy also shares some similarity with science. Science also is in some sense unnatural because it interrupts the everyday experience of being immersed in an activity, being immersed in solving some practical problems and instead wants to understand, wants to answer fundamental questions. But philosophy and science obviously are different from each other. They have important differences. Maybe this is a personal preference but I prefer not to answer the question or not to, when I think about philosophy, I don't wanna ask what is philosophy. I want to instead ask a different question. I wanna ask, what is a philosophical life? Because philosophy gives rise is a tendency. It is not just something that happens in an atmosphere without any body, any person getting involved. Philosophy is a form of life. It is one possible way to live a life, or at least it is a mode that there's a mode of living sometimes we can enter into. Now, I am often critical of people who are very disciplined. So imagine, for example, a student in their late teens or early 20s, they get familiar with a philosopher, let's say Nietzsche or Heidegger or Hegel. They pick a philosopher and they fall in love with that philosopher. They get sentimentally attached to that philosopher. And they, they study that philosopher for years and years, for decades, they become an expert. They have read all the books by that philosopher. That is unfortunately, that form of life, I don't recognize that as philosophical because it is too peaceful, it is too practical. You are, if somebody is doing that, they are following 
a series of steps that is according to an established order. And philosophy always is in tension with established orders. Philosophy always asks, why is this the way we are doing things? Why is this the way we study Heidegger? So people who get involved in a disciplinary sense with philosophy, um, they might end up, unfortunately, being non-philosophical or doing things or adopting forms of life that are not philosophical. It is much more likely to have a very haphazard education study a little bit of mathematics, study a little bit of, I don't know, chemistry, study a little bit of science, a little bit of philosophy, a little bit of literature, that is a more likely method of being philosophical at the end. And of course, it takes a long time to prepare, as Michel Serre says, almost all of your life, if you are intending to be a philosopher, or almost all of your life is spent preparing. <laughs> so. That's another way to, to approach the question, what is philosophy? But everything I've said so far doesn't really fulfill. I don't really experience a sense of fulfilling the question, satisfact giving a satisfactory response to the question. You know, there, there are different ways of thinking about that question, what is philosophy? That itself is a very philosophical question. I don't think we can ever definitively say, okay, this is, this is philosophy, that's it. We figured it out. Because Philosophy itself will, will revolt against that, will react to that, and wants to keep going. There's that movement of thought. Yeah. Any answer to what is philosophy, thinking will react to it and wants to keep generating in response to already existing, established answers. Wants to give alternative answers and challenges to existing answers. Is that good for now? I don't know.